Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about rescuing a blown out sky using Lightroom. The obvious tool to use is the graduated filter. I'm going to use it, but I'm going to add some color to it and play around the temperature to give it a certain effect I like. Now there's hardly any detail here. I have gone through a, a, a develop with this, but I couldn't bring out any detail without using the graduated filter. So make sure tools, you're on graduated filter, press M on your keyboard. Come here, if any of the sliders have been moved, double click on effect to zero them all out. Crosshair, press the shift key, keep it pressed to constrain the overlay to a 90 degree angle. If you take it off the shift key that is, it wobbles all over the place. You can always change the angle later if you don't like it. So drag it down to about there, two thirds of the way in. First, I need to bring out the detail. So drop the exposure, bring up the contrast, bring down the highlights, bring down the shadows, bring down the whites to clip the whites, also boost the blacks a little bit. So we're getting somewhere near to where we need to be. Clarity, I am gonna use some. I wouldn't normally use it on a sky, but it helps to find the edges. So I'm gonna leave it on about 15. Dehaze is the big one. It will have a massive effect. So I'm gonna drag it up to about 30. Don't go too far, you'll introduce noise or break up the image, so be careful. Saturation, if there were any color there, and it's probably a small amount, I'm going to boost it up just to help the thing along. Sharpness, again around 15, just to help the edges. Noise, I have increased the noise, so around 30 will be about right. More A is color noise, very rare these days. We don't need to play with the slider. There isn't any, so leave it alone. Defringe is about lens fringing, which you get on hard edge objects against bright backgrounds. It manifests itself as a purple fringe. We don't have it. So the only thing to do now is to add the color in. Click on the X, pick quite a bright blue, quite an intense blue. Obviously far too much, but come up to the temp slider and drag it to the right roughly to around 17 at first. Let it update, it doesn't look that bad. In fact, it's a little bit too yellow, so I might bring it down slightly to about eight there. So that doesn't look that bad. Now, I could drag this down if I wanted to, but I'm going to make those rocks darker and darker in the foreground. There is a way around this, of course. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the brush here on the graduated filter panel, put it on a raise, Put the feather up to about 50 and the flow up to 100. Take auto mask off if it's on. I'm just gonna paint around in his foreground to erase out any effect in the foreground. You can see it getting brighter in the foreground already. I haven't got the overlay on yet. I will do in a minute, put it on. I'm gonna come up into these rocks here as far as I dare risk. Like that. The reason I haven't got auto mask on, there's a lot of edges in this document anyway, especially in the rocks. So I'm being very careful. I don't go to the edges at the moment, but I will do when I get more zoomed in, I will turn auto mask on. So Z on my keyboard, it will go to two to one. If you don't like two to one, pick another one. I'm gonna actually pick one to one actually. I'm gonna click on one to one here. That'll do me. Spacebar pressed to invoke the hand tool so I can move it around like so. Now I'm going to put the auto mask on so I can detect the edges because I've already got rid of a lot of it around um, the bulk of the rock. So I'm making it quite bright here. So I'm being extremely careful when I come to the edges. Although the auto mask you know, will work in your favor, you have got to be careful. I'm getting a bit of spinning ball here. You probably won't see it in this video, but it's trying to make catch up. So I'm gonna take the auto mask off again. I have got the spinning ball back. This is very processor intensive. So you've gotta be patient sometimes, especially if your Mac is quite old like mine is. It's four years old now. I don't consider that to be that old, but it is starting to show its age. So let's zoom in again. And this time I'm gonna to go to two to one, let's say. Click on two to one, spacebar pressed, come up to these gentlemen here, make sure you've got auto mask tick this time. Come in, and I'm gonna press O on my keyboard so I can see the overlay in red. Shift and O will cycle through to green, that's white, that's black. 
that's red. Red is best in this scenario. I'm going to paint off the effect there, but I've got auto mask on. Brush smaller, much, much smaller. I've got some feather on this brush, which is helping me, of course. Not much, around 40 will do, because I want to work quickly. I don't want to lose you. And a bit bigger on this gentleman here, because he's, you know, a bit bulkier. And he's got a trig point in front of him. A trigonometry point, we call them. In the UK, it's about surveying for the heights of objects anyway it's all about mapping i'm just keeping the conversation going a bit smaller there i will go to his arm area there take it off his arm i am being fussy i'm looking for red anywhere now i'm going to take the auto mask off and i think it's a bit red in there i'm going to take the red out of the shadows there you can see it there i'm having an effect that's what the trouble with auto mask is it will detect edges that are there and obviously there's edges inside the rocks. It wasn't working that well. So I'm looking for that red overlay anywhere now. I don't think I've got much left. Actually, that's pretty good. Z on my keyboard. O for overlay to turn it off. Let it catch up. This is processor intensive. There's the sky. It looks pretty good. I've got one small problem. I have got a little bit of a luminance board around him there. So I am going to zoom in a little bit more, maybe to three to one. And I'm going to use that brush, but I'm going to turn it to the A brush here. Bring the size down. Take the auto, well, actually take the auto mask off and just paint away around there and get rid of it. I've got to be careful. I've got to have my flow quite low because actually the way this works is if you've got your flow on 100, it's equivalent to the top of the overlay so you've got to keep it quite low so that's why i should have been more careful and that'll do i'm not going to get too fussy that'll do for now z on my keyboard to zoom out mouse away before after before after i would have been really more fussy around those gentlemen there but i didn't have time you saw me get rid of that little bleed i had there of luminosity but you've got to be careful playing around with density and flow, etc. I don't want to go into that too much. I have covered it many years ago in another video. I need to update my Lightroom videos. So that's it, guys. By adding a bit of colour in and warming it up and really pushing the contrast up and the clarity and the dehaze, I've got to quite a good sky, quite a dramatic sky, on and off. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.